Okay, so when last we met, we were going through our recycler view and uh, we just want to get to this recycler view adapter because uh, somebody said that's where that's where the action is. Um, and uh, in fact, there is a lot of action uh, in this recycler view adapter. So a couple of things. First of all, um, I have decided to pass in a parameter to this recycler view adapter, which is the list model. And so when you see here, I create a list model and then I pass this list model into the recycler view adapter. What's going on with that? Uh, not much. When I say private val, what I'm saying is that this parameter is not just a parameter. It is also a day, uh, an instant uh, class, an instance variable. Sorry. So it's like I said, private list model that's you know list model and then this is just like yeah, right? so th this isn't quite valid um but that's sort of what i'm you know i'm saying hey whatever this parameter is i am going to have this be a variable called list model okay so not only is this an input parameter this is now a um, instance variable that I can refer to. Um, I'll go over this in a second. Um, and I will go over that in a second. First, I want to take a look at onCreateViewHolder. So this is an overridden, fu an override function. And onCreateViewHolder, we were creating a view holder. So this is where we're going to do our inflation. And things are a little bit more complicated here. First of all, I need to inflate a view binding object, which is just row binding, and that comes from my, my row XML file, right? Every XML file, because we're doing view binding, has a corresponding uh, view binding object. And so I'm saying inflate this um, view binding object using a layout inflator from our parent view group dot context. Trust me on this one. Uh, this is where things are just kind of a little complicated in Android. Their views are uh, in groups and the groups are hierarchically arranged. Uh, all that means is just um, the row is being created inside another view. And so we're getting our context from that parent view. This row is in this parent view, which is in an even larger view that has the, the uh, action bar, if you, you see what I mean? So we are inflating this object. We, our inflator is coming from the parent context and uh, we have to pass a, a pointer to the parent, but we don't want to attach it. So you're gonna see this pattern over and over again uh, a little confusing at first, but basically this gets you your view binding object and then we put it in the view holder and we're done. Okay, so on create view holder, we are returning a view holder object and a view holder object requires a view binding object, which we get by inflation. Boom. Okay, now this is inflation. The other big operation is binding. What does binding mean? Binding means, hey, here's a new view holder sorry, here's an old view holder object, fill it in with the data at this position. Okay. First of all, how do I get the object at this position? Well, I go to my list model, which was passed in when I was created. And I say, get item. How was get item implemented? Oh, in the incredible obvious way. Get item is just array indexing. So I say, get the item at this position. And then I'm going to, once I have, have this item, I'm going to grab things from this item to fill in this view binding object. So in my view holder, I've got this row binding object. This is VH, I've got this row binding object. Where did this come from? Well, let's take a look at our view holder. Our view holder has val, it's public, a row binding object. 
and we are using this row binding object uh, uh, to initialize the, the view holder, and uh, we're going to set an on click listener. I'll, I'll get into this in a minute, but the point is when we create the view holder, we pass in a row binding object. That's what we did here, and that's why here we can get it back. This row binding object uh, has all the stuff in the row, which is the text and the pick. And we set the text to whatever item text we have. This item is of type data. And data is this data class that has a name and a rating, which is a string and a Boolean. So this name is a string. We set it to the text property. And this Boolean, if it's true, we set the picture to the excited emotic, uh, emoticon, and that's depicted here in the in the margin, thanks to Android Studio. And if uh, this rating is false, uh, we use this emoticon, and that's how we get this list with you know bad album, good album. I mean, something we said for the first album, but it, it's not good. Um, people like this album. I'm, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, anyway, so on and so forth. And, and that's it. So this is binding. We take our view holder and we replace it with the data that's at position. All right, I keep sort of saying that, but this is what it actually looks like. It looks like, get me into this, uh, you know, row binding object and get the uh, corresponding data items from this position. Get uh, item count. Hey, let's go to our list model and ask it how many items there are. How does the list model know? Uh, it's, just, it's just the size of the list. Okay, so this is the entire adapter. Now, the one thing that I did not go over is this set on click listener. So when we bind, we part of our binding, we're, we're putting in this sort of um, uh, text and picture, we could set an on click listener here. But binding happens a lot as the user scrolls. And do you really need to do that? Answer, no, you don't we are only ever creating a small number of view holder objects. Well, I mean, not totally small, one, two, three, four, you know, one view holder object for each one of these. When we create them, we're going to set a single on click listener. How can we get away with this? And this on click listener is going to do this. You selected three live dead, right? You selected, uh, oops, dollar pause is the position. I'll show you that in a minute. And how do I know what's in the position? Oh, I, this is a cool Kotlin thing. You can put some code in, the, in this bracket. I take the list model and I get the item at that position. Now it turns out one of the things that Kotlin gives you is if, you, if the runtime gives me a, a view holder object, I can find the adapter position, which is the position in the underlying list. Now, there's some technical things going on here. There are different reasons why uh, this can sometimes sort of fail. I don't actually think my code here is correct in the sense that I think this code, this code says always returns a valid index. I don't actually think that's true. I think this code can return no position. I'm not really sure what to do in that uh, case. I've, I've been looking it up, trying to figure it out. I, I can't. So. Um, you know, if you come up with this, definitely let me know. I've, I've asked ChatGPT, and uh, amazingly, it didn't help. Um, okay, but but the, the point is, you know, to sort of first order, this position is just uh, the, what is it? Oh, this is the view holder. It's so this dot um, binding adapter position, uh, which is just your location in the underlying list. And that's sort of the way you think about it. And so that's how it knows that this is zero. And even when this is item zero on the screen, it comes out as item one, because this position is the position in the list, not the position on screen. And, and then I, I, do, I just do a snack bar. Okay, and that's, uh, that's it. Uh, this this is the uh, is the view holder. How how is that? Because this is this init is uh, a little bit like a constructor. 
um, anytime uh, an item is of a view holder is made, uh, this init will run, but it will only run in the beginning to initialize uh, the item. So that is all of a recycler view. There are a bunch of pieces. Uh, I do think it gets easier with time. Uh, you are going to see a lot of this code almost verbatim time and time again. Binding changes a little bit based on what the actual layout is. OnCreate is usually pretty simple. This stuff is all pretty simple. Uh, and the onclick listener, that's a little complicated. And then, you know, eventually we'll get into things like uh, what happens if I want to do a long press on this? What happens if I want to do a swipe on this? What happens if I want to move this item? So there's some there's some functions to sort of deal with that. But hopefully this gives you a sense of what uh, the recycler view is all about.